Hello crafty friends, welcome to today's video. Last night I made this card and it features three die cut vases, some die cut twigs and some die cut cherry blossom. And I thought I would show you how I made this card. I used this die set that I got from Amazon and it's relatively inexpensive. You get lots of vases or jugs, you get your branches and your cherry blossom. But what if you haven't got this set and you don't want to splurge on a new set? Well, I've been through my dies and found some dies, basic shape dies that I can make look like vases. These are the dies from my stash that are going to masquerade as vases. But before we do any die cutting, I want to create the card that I'm going to die cut from. And I'm going to use Luscious Powders to create this lovely shimmery effect. To create my shimmery card, I'm going to use Luscious Pigment Powder in Penny Dreadful and Teal. And this is going to give me a kind of verdigris look. If you want to know more about pigment powders, then I have a whole series called Pigment Powders 101 and you can find that playlist by the channel page. To get going, I'm going to add this Spectrum Noir Versatile Adhesive Liquid Glue to a piece of smooth white cardstock and spread it out with a sponge dauber. And it looks quite streaky at the moment, but I'm going to do this pounce up and down to get rid of the streaks but also to create some uh, I don't know what you call it well it's a texture I don't know what kind of texture it is I guess it's almost marbled so this glue will dry sticky and once that's happened which doesn't take very long you can add your luscious powders to them, to it rather. There we go, a kind of speckled, dimpled look. You'll know when the glue is ready because it feels tacky to the touch, but it's not coming off on your fingers. So I've got my Penny Dreadful here and I'm going to dust that over the top like that. Quite generous because it's got to go quite a long way to cover. And now I'm going to pick up my teal. On the original card I used green, but I thought I'd try it with teal today to see how the two colours look together. Now I'm going to use the brush just to spread these around and mix the colours a bit. And get my fan brush to brush it off like that. And all you need to do is make sure all the glue is covered and then it will no longer be sticky. And you don't need to do anything else to it. That powder, the mica and the pigment are held in place by the glue. So now for the die cutting with my basic shapes. So I've got a hexagon. I've got a balloon. I think I might use the, mm, the smaller balloon. I've got a long rectangle, a circle, a label with square corners. Well, not square, angled flat corners. That's the word I'm looking for. I've got a square. I've got a label with dipped in corners. That's an octagon, a diamond. A ticket, just try and shuffle things up to get a bit more on. This is part of a coffee cup die set and a kind of, well it's a banner but it's got a round bottom. So I'm going to die cut those using my cuttle bug. So here we have some nearly vases. Some of them can be used as is. So I would say this is, is this an octagon? That's an octagon. That's a square. That can be used as is. So could the hexagon. So could the coffee cup one. So they're fine as they are. The others require a little bit of surgery. 
So I'm going to take this circle and literally just snip off the bottom. So now we've got a flat bottom vase and to bevel that edge to make it look a bit more like a die cut and less like it's been cut with a trimmer, I'll just run this embossing tool along the bottom. So now we've got a round vase. This was the flat cornered label and I've created two vases, a short one and a taller one. Same with the ticket. This one is a short little vase and this one is a taller vase and it's got a little bit of decoration on it from the perforation. This balloon, obviously as a balloon it would be that way up, but I think it looks quite good as a rustic, wonky vase. So just slice the bottom off again, run the embossing tool along it, and there you have a vase. This is the label with the indented corners. Same principle. You could chop it in half or you can have one long, one short. This was the rectangle, the long, thin rectangle. And I'm going to create two vases by slicing at an angle. So now that's an interesting shape. Now we've got this domed or rounded flag. I don't want the little holes and I can slice those off with a trimmer. So now I've got a domed vase. And this little tag here, I'm gonna chop the hole off, but hopefully you can see how it's got a little bit of an interesting neck at the top now, so you can use tag dies. And the last one is this diamond. You could slice it across there, so you have a triangle shaped one, or you could slice it a bit down below, so it's a slightly different shape. And there's another interesting vase. You could nick the top off or cut a little dip into it so it looks more like a vase. If you want to round the bottom corners, you could, whoops, on any of these that you have done the surgery to, you could just take a pair of scissors and give them a round bottom. So there we have lots of different DIY vase ideas. I'm going to stick my vases directly onto my card blank, but I want to give them something to sit on so they're not floating in midair. And I can create a shelf simply by running my bone folder down some grooves in my scoreboard. And that will create a little subtle shelf for my vases to sit on. To give my vases a little bit of dimension, I'm just going to flip them over and curve them slightly round my fingers like that. I'm not going to use all of these today. I only made, well, maybe I'll do five all the way across so that we can see quite a few of the different varieties that we've got here. So those five will work really well, I think. To stick these to my card blank, I'm going to use both foam tape and mini glue dots. This will help with the dimension, but also make sure they don't fall off. So where I've creased them in the middle, I'm going to add some foam tape, just one strip down the middle like that. Actually, this one will probably get two because it's a tall one take off the release paper and now I'm going to put a mini glue dot rolled up into a sausage down either side and I'm using mini glue dots because they've got a bit of dimension to them not as much as the foam and they're a bit flexible so if the uh, card wiggles around or tries to unstretch itself or uncurl itself They'll have enough give to stay stuck to the card. So they're ready now. They've got the foam down the middle and the glue dots down the sides. And I can stand them 
hopefully nice and straight on my shelf and I'm going to have a higgledy piggledy arrangement of heights and spacing just for making sure that there's plenty of visual interest so I'm gonna make sure those are really pressed down nicely so now we've got our vases to create my branches I used the branch dies and I just cut some cardstock that I'd coloured with vintage photo and then glued them in but what if you haven't got branch dies well you can draw your branches on so I've got a brown fine liner here and I'm going to hold it at the top end to reduce the amount of control that I have place it on and just draw zigzaggy lines and because I'm not holding it with any real control I'm getting some really natural looking branch lines and when you've done that if you want to you can then go in and colour them and widen them and maybe neaten them up if you want to I'm going to do the same thing on my card start with my tip of my pen underneath my vase so that it appears to be coming out of the vase and with this style you really only need a small number of branches so now I can go in and make them heavier thicken them up so they look substantial and you can use anything for this you could use a felt tip you can use a fine liner if you're feeling um, that you're going to make a mess of your card you could always do it in pencil first and then draw over it with your media of choice with branches what you tend to find is that the ones that would be closer to the tree are thicker so you could thicken those up a bit and the ones that are further from the tree branch the tree trunk rather are thinner so you can give these ones a bit more weight down the bottom and then let these ones thin out a bit so it doesn't look all that different to what i've got here with the die cut twigs it's just not dimensional but you could add a bit of dimension by adding some more felt pen or whatever in certain areas so it looks a bit darker on the underside of the branch we could come in with a darker color you could also go through possibly your Christmas die stash. You might have something like an antler die that you'd use at Christmas. That would work for branches as well. These are the flower dies that came with this set. And you've got different shaped flowers and some insides, the middle bit of the flower. And all I did was colour some paper with sponge sugar distress oxide, die cut out lots of these little flowers and this one i colored card with scattered straw and then die cut out those put the flowers together and stuck them on in a pleasing arrangement but of course you can use any small flower dies that you have in your stash so this is my sheet of small flower dies i could use that one there's a couple of teeny tiny ones there another one I could use that and chop off those. There's three little star shaped flowers joined together. This one's got four petals and a hole in the middle. There's one here that's just four petals, five petals, some blobby ones. So you can go through your small flower stash and find anything that will work. But instead of putting flowers on your cards, you could actually go a bit left of field and put something else on your branches. I've got some small butterfly dies here that I think would 
look quite good on there. These are a bit larger and I've also got some hearts. So these are circled eyes, but they have little heart holes in them. So the little hearts could be used to add some petal shapes, heart shapes. Same with these two. They're not meant for cutting out the hearts, as it were, but they do cut out hearts. So you could have a look through your stash and find flower shapes that you've got or something else that's interesting. I'm rather tempted by the idea of tiny little butterflies. So I'm going to colour this with a bit of sponge sugar. Don't even think I'm going to need my blending brush for this. I'm just going to smear my pink ink all over to get a bit of variation so it's not completely solid. And I've got scattered straw here and at one end I'm going to do that. So we've got a bit of scattered straw and sponge sugar and a bit of just sponge sugar. I'm going to pop this through my mini Gemini, add a little shim just to make sure everything cuts nicely. So now I've got a pile of yellow and pink butterflies and a pile of pink butterflies. And all I'm going to do is dip each one into some glue and then place it on the branch. This might be a bit left of field, but you could always mix flowers and butterflies together. In fact, I've got a few left over from yesterday, so I might just do that. I might mix in some butterflies and flowers. And if you've made a bit of a mess with your doodled branches, you can always cover up the messy bit with your flowers. And you can always add extra branches if you want. If once you've stuck everything down, you think, oh, that's not quite right. I want to add a few extra flowers. There's nothing to stop you doing that at all. And now we can put in our butterflies. even have some of the butterflies fluttering around the sky they don't have to be all sitting on branches so there you go two cherry blossom vase cards one made using a designed for the purpose die set the other one using bits from a stash mostly apart from the little flowers but I could have used other flower dies so I hope you found that helpful and it's encouraged you to go rummaging through your stash to see what basic shape dies you can turn into vases like this or anything else really. If you make any cards using this kind of masquerading technique, do come over to my Facebook group and share some pics. I would love to see what you put together. And if you want to see more videos from me, do subscribe and ring the notification bell and I'll see you back here very soon. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.